Welcome again to Soul Moment here on Church of Uganda Family TV and with me, the Reverend Engineer Dr. Emmanuel Mwesigwa, coming to you from Chambogo University. Tonight, we are going to visit a horrible scene in Genesis chapter 18 and chapter 19, where we will see judgment against sin. But as we reflect on judgment against sin, we are also going to continue with our reflection on the great visitation of God Almighty revealed in his creation. And so this story is the story of, uh, of, of the judgment against Sodom and Gomorrah. The song we've just been singing talks about God is here, God is with us, Lubanga Natye. And, and it, it talks about what God hates. God hates hatred. God hates immorality. God hates this. God hates that. Those were the later verses. The first verses we're talking about what God loves. God loves peace. God loves uh, loving one another. God loves these things. So we need to know what God loves and what God hates. Because when we indulge in what God hates... There will be repercussions. There will be serious consequences. And those are the ones we see in Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's go to Genesis chapter 18 from verse 20 to 21. We will see what was happening there and what the repercussions were later. Genesis 18 from verse 20. Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and they are seen grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is bad and the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. In Sodom and Gomorrah, there was such sin to the extent that many, many thousands of years later today, there are some sins we call sodomy because of what was happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. That is how bad it was. And God decided to, to descend and send some messengers to come and inspect because the outcry was so serious. You know, sometimes sin can cause the earth, the cities, creation to cry out to God. I don't know who cried out and God heard the outcry. But somehow, sin cried out and the place said, no, this is so bad. This is not what God designed us to be. And God had to send some people to inspect. He had to send some heavenly beings to inspect and find out what was going on. And then when we go to chapter number 19, in verse 23, we find the messengers of God have arrived to do the inspection and they have almost concluded their report. And let's read from verse number 23, chapter 19 in the book of Genesis. By the time Lot reached Zohar, the sun had set over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah. From the Lord out of the heavens, thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the cities, and also the vegetation in the land. But Lord's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah, toward all the land of the plain, and he saw dense smoke rising from the land like smoke from a furnace. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham and brought Lot out of the catastrophe and overthrew the cities where Lot had lived. I've only gone to the end of the story, but some of you remember the story of uh, the scene of Sodom and how 
they were so sinful among themselves, they even wanted to rape angels. Uh -huh. The angels who came to announce to Lot what was going on from the house of God, the, 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 the Sodomites, those, those people in Sodom wanted to, to, to rape those angels. And, and Lot could not have that happen under his roof. He offered his daughters instead. And, and, and he actually offered his daughters, but God rescued that situation. That's how bad, how terrible Sodom was. In our day-to-day, -day, friends, there is sin that is rampant in some cities. Some of those cities, we speak about them and we know they are synonymous to sin and immorality. But not just in those cities, not just in those towns, but also there are people around us who have lost their conscience, who have lost their sense of good and evil. They have simply offered their bodies to reckless living and just happening, just, just licentiously going around doing anything. It could be sexual immorality like it was in Sodom. It could be stealing and just taking resources of the public and misusing them, using them for personal gratification, personal gain. These things, we see them even in our day. May the Lord have mercy upon us. You are tuned in to this wonderful program of Soul Moment that you may be warned, you yourself first. But you will also be reminded that that friend of yours, if you can talk to them to turn away from sin, you better do so because sin has the same consequences wherever it is, the same consequences. Now, the reason I went to Sodom and Gomorrah it is because of the way they were punished. Uh, and I, <laughs> I'm just fascinated by the way the punishment came. From verse number 24, we see that then the Lord rained down burning sulfur. Oh my goodness. Burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah. That was the punishment. Fire came from up in the heavens. Now those... Uh, people who are interested in the science of that fire will wonder, did God melt one of those stars? The stars that we were talking about yesterday. Maybe God just touched one of those stars and they melted and they started raining down on earth. Oh my God. It must have been a terrible place, a terrible scene. Uh, God raining down fire. But if God can rain down fire, if fire can come from one of those molten stars and burn up a city, oh, how majestic the Lord's name is that he has not burnt us up, that no accident has happened in the cosmic uh, outlayers there and, and caused the earth to have a little comet, a, a little star, star fragment come down to us and burn us up. God is gracious. He is patient with you. He is patient with me. So much danger could have befallen us if not for the grace of God Almighty. And so the God who can rain down brimstone and fire, burning sulfur, is also able to protect us from those very, very hot things because he is gracious and actually, as we talk about this, some of us remember that we could be well deserving of that kind of punishment. But God is gracious. God is gracious. Some of us, the worst that has happened to us is being arrested by the police and being arraigned before the courts of law and perhaps facing the embarrassment and maybe some imprisonment. But we have a chance to repent, a chance to turn away from sin and escape that danger fire. Later on in this week, I will talk about good fire. But today, we've only ended at danger fire that we have to escape. It displays the wonders of God, but we need to escape it. Because it comes to those who adamantly remain in sin. But those who repent and are reformed will be rescued 
thank God in this very story we have a man that was rescued. He was rescued with part of his family because they were upright before the Lord. I can assure you when you set your heart to God, even in an evil generation, you can be rescued. You will be rescued by God's great love and God's great mercy. Unfortunately, part of the family that was rescued, one of them still perished, and that was Lot's wife, who looked back, and that was against the instructions that had been given to them. And on looking back, he became, she became a pillar of salt. These are great lessons that we learn to follow the instructions of God without mincing, without jumping any of them. I pray that from this story, two things will come to your mind. Number one, you will marvel at the wonders of God's grace who has scattered burning stars all over us, but none of them has come to kill you. Like the ones which went to kill the Sodomites, the Sodom and Gomorrah people. But secondly, you will take serious warning against sin and the judgment that follows thereafter and beat yourself in the chest and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Give me grace to live upright before you and give me grace to warn those near me to live similarly. Let us make that prayer together. God Almighty, we thank you for the display of your wonders, even in danger fire. But we thank you for your love and mercy that you rescue those who set themselves apart and live not according to the standards of the sinful world, but live upright before you. Give us the grace to repent of our sins and escape the danger fire that we have read about. Give us the grace to follow you truly all the days of our lives. And may your peace be our portion. May your blessings be our portion today. As we shun every distraction and every sin and set our hearts to follow you, to love you, to honor you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. May God bless you and have a wonderful night. Amen.